Hi, I'm Deanna Chavez, and I'm uh, at the Library of Virginia. This is day 52 of Richmond Public Library's 100 Days RVA Reads, which promotes PBS and WCVE's The Great American Read. Um, as I said, I'm here at the Library of Virginia. This is our exhibition hall, and I'll tell you a little bit about this exhibition after I talk about the book. Um, I chose to read The Intuitionist by Colson Whitehead. Uh, I read this because I had wanted to read a book by Colson Whitehead for quite a while, and when I saw this on the list and read the summary, it just sounded like it would be a very good book, and it was. It is so good. Um, Lila Mae Watson is the first female African-American elevator inspector for a large unnamed city in an unnamed time period. Um, there are lots of clues, so I think it's probably uh, reasonable to conclude that the city is New York City and the time period is, is the era of formal segregation. Uh, Lila May is very uh, confident that she does a good job, and she is part of a group called the Intuitionist. So there are two groups of two types of elevator inspectors. You have the empiricist, who uh, use tools and um, measurements and things like that to inspect elevators, as you would expect an elevator inspector to work. And Lila May is a part of a group of intuitionists. And they are people who can go into an elevator and just by looking at the elevator, feeling the vibrations, and maybe riding up and down a floor or two, they can tell if there's anything wrong with the elevator and what's wrong with the elevator. Uh, and so Lila May has a, has a very good track record and she knows that she does not make mistakes. So the action in the book really begins when a brand new elevator in a brand new building that Lila May has just in, inspected um, has a catastrophic failure. It goes into free fall. And Lila May knows that she didn't make a mistake, so she goes on a quest to find out who is responsible for sabotaging the elevator. And uh, it, it, the, the plot is fantastic. There are mobsters, there are corrupt politicians, there are, you know, the usual, the usual bunch that you would expect back in this time period. And um, Lila May kind of goes into hiding to find out who is responsible. And she doesn't trust anyone, which is a really good thing because nobody in this book is what he or she seems to be. And there are a lot of twists and turns at the, uh, toward the end. Um, and it, the, the plot is just really riveting. Um, Mr. Whitehead has a lot to say about race and race relations, and um, he also talks about, uh, he ponders the possibility of whether elevators can actually think and feel. And I believe that most of us here at the library think that our elevators can think and feel <laughs> because they seem to have a mind of their own. And I know I have things at my house that I am convinced can think and feel. So um, along with the plot, there are lots of interesting things to consider. Uh, I, it, this is his first novel, and it was very difficult for me to remember that it is his first novel because it is, because it is so beautifully written. It is so well done. Um, you know, it's, it's just hard to think that anybody could have that, that kind of uh, you know, product at the end of their first try. Um, I, I also wanted to read this book because um, you know, I know nothing about the life of an African-American woman, especially during the time of segregation. And so this book helped me understand a little bit more what she went through as a person who was the first uh, of her race and gender to work for a company like this, uh, the things that she had to go through just to survive. She was pretty much invisible, other than being the butt of a joke or, you know, when somebody needed a scapegoat, when they needed a scapegoat for this elevator falling, and, and then people who knew, knew who she was. But um, I started to think uh, about the, the sort of connection between the exhibition we have here and Lila May's life. Um, these are, are African-American soldiers. And like Lila May, they would have been, uh, you know, going into an organization where they, they were different and maybe not quite as um, accepted. 
uh, roughly the same time period as Lila Mae, even though these guys were a little bit older. And they too were, were probably invisible in society. They served their country, they came back and did the jobs they had before of farmers, mechanics, uh, machinists, th uh, chauffeurs, things like that. And they probably went back to being invisible in society. And these studio portraits that they had done were really the only time in their lives when they, they were able to say, to show exactly who they were, were and to be visible. So I thought that was a, a good kind of tie-in. And I think the book and this exhibition, if you read the book and you look at the, the large photographs in this exhibition, you can get a little bit of a feel for what their lives might have been like. Um, it, it helps your understanding of people who are, who, you know, you just have no, uh, you don't have a clue what their life was like. So um, this exhibition is up at the Library of Virginia. We're at 800 East Broad Street. This is up through November 9th, so I hope you, you will come in and visit it. And uh, I w just wanted to point out also the, the poster for um, The Great American Reads. Uh, if you would like to see more of these videos, see what people have read, and also to participate as a, re a reader, you can go to rvalibrary.org slash 100 days. You can also join the Facebook page and check out all of the videos that have been made to this point, and they're, they're fantastic. Um, lots of interesting books and interesting people reading them. Thank you.